Is it sure? Yeah, okay. So you're working with Leandro today on the Hi, I'm Leandro, and I want to continue this kind of uh, yeah, core based applications and how we're using that in the IoT. I will just start with um, talking a bit about what Live to m is, why we use it. Um, and why we need some extensions to make it fit some scenarios which are not, let's say, uh, contemplated in the standard currently. Then I will talk about how we did these extensions and uh, some evaluations in the end about uh, how we, uh, you know, check the different scenarios and different um, deployment sites. Uh, follow the, the security and mm -hmm. uh, and look at the performance of the extensions. So just to get started, a bit of motivation here. Um, we usually have uh, this typical IoT challenges that we face, in, let's say mostly of the deployments. Uh, of course, security requirements, it's uh, in the center of uh, IoT. We need our things to be secure, our communications to be encrypted, authenticated, um, but we also have to deal with constraint devices. So usually energy constraint, memory constraint, uh, slow. Um, and then finally, something that has been arising since the beginning of the IoT is uh, vendor compatibility. So we usually end up deploying our own solution. Maybe we use some underlying common protocol. We might even use a call, but again, at some point, you need some semantic interoperability to actually allow the IoT to be truly connected and actually understand each other. Um, and finally, not always, but in many cases, it's good to have edge collaboration. So some sort of edge computing in the sense that nodes can actually interact with one another uh, without having to rely on a cloud infrastructure, without having to have constant, maybe sometimes expensive or inexistent uh, app link communication. So if we look at some of these challenges, we could say that three of them are, are uh, tackled or need to be solved by double machine to machine. Uh, I will go uh, a bit uh, later about how it is that it works and what's the, the, the way they solve these challenges. But we see that edge collaboration is not there. So basically, that when 2 m proposes some architecture which is server-centric, that means that all the communication on the application logic has to go on the server and then go back to the nodes, uh, which really prevents our collaboration between nodes and nodes, at least in the sense of reusing the web to web capabilities. So this is uh, where we put our proposals, our extensions. So let's start with a brief uh, overview of Lagoon Machine to Machine. This is uh, what they propose as a protocol stack. I mean, they allow multiple uh, transport layers and even application layers. Uh, this would be run over HTTP, which usually is not the case. But for our evaluation and for the rest of the talk, basically, we focus on the typical uh, stack that we would see in IoT and mainly Riot. Uh, so basically, I went to M over uh, co-op using Postcore um, or DTLS. Uh, and everything over UDP transfer layer. So like I said, Lagoon 2 m is, uh, is a IoT management uh, protocol. It gives some nice features based on its basement center and uh, existing technology. Um, so it runs over standard technology, but it provides on top of that things like semantic interoperability in the sense that nodes can actually expose uh, resources in a in a uh, uniform way, and servers can interact 
with different notes from multiple vendors in a unifying uh, fashion. Uh, it also takes care of access control to the resources. They have defined their own way to control the access from servers to different uh, objects, which is the way they organize information of the resources in the node. And finally, they also offer uh, bootstrapping software updates uh, through multiple existing standards. So if we see this uh, picture here, we would have, for instance, two IoT devices, um, which would have uh, different vendors, so they can belong from different companies, and they would be the low end term clients in the terms of this protocol, and they would have uh, some server, usually in the cloud, that uh, is running some application to, for instance, do some control of them. That's the low end term server, which uh, controls the access rights of the nodes and the credentials. But there is no communication in the local network, at least directly between the nodes. So usually what happens is, for instance, we have a sensor that triggers uh, is triggered by some event and needs to send a notification. That notification has to go all the way up to uh, the server, our gateway, and maybe to some cloud, um, and then processed by the application that is running the logic in our in our deployment. And then if it needs to react to it, for instance, using some actuator, then uh, that has to go back to the local network and run the execution. So there's no logic running on the uh, on the edge. Um, all these communications that are uh, in blue here, they are of course uh, secured uh, by different protocols. It could be TLS, it could be OSCOR, it could be both. Um, and uh, like I said, everything is server centric, but that's a problem in certain uh, applications that need some edge collaboration. So if we wanted the nodes to talk directly, we would need to change this. Um, I also mentioned that lab to m manages access control to the information to the objects, and the way it does it is through uh, more objects. So all the information is uh, organized in the same data structure, which they call objects. Each object can have uh, zero or more uh, instances, and uh, that kind of makes it uh, homogeneous the way that servers can interact with nodes because they know already how to how the semantics of uh, all the uh, sources look like. Um, one can do typical uh, operations like read, write, uh, execute, create instances, and um, to control these uh, operations, we use what's called the access control object, which I will not really go into detail, but basically tell which server is allowed to do which operation on which uh, object instance. So one server might be able to read the value of a light, for instance, yeah, but only the other server would be able to, for instance, change it. So maybe some read-only and some read-and-write uh, information. So this handle in a sort of generic way using this access control object based for servers. Now that we have an idea of how the low end uh, proposes to solve all these challenges, we uh, I would like to show how we propose to solve the remaining challenge of having this edge collaboration. So looking at the scene diagram, it would be nice to instead of going through the cloud, we could just Send the notification directly to the device, and that's the uh, that's the main idea. Usually, with call, we want to have the IoT that has devices that talk to each other, and having the local network, which would produce probably the uh, latency, the amount of calls, and the amount of energy that we we'll use uh, to send the notification. Uh, we would like to send from the sensor, for instance, to the actuator, and there is some application logic that lives already on the on the actuators so on this. AC control, climate control uh, unit. And um, in this case, we can see that for this, we need also access rights and credentials living in the nodes themselves, though not only on the servers. In this case, the having this distributed way of um, having an edge application would allow us to increase the bandwidth and uh, also probably uh, reduce latency and save some energy because of the amount of nodes that are involved in the communication. Uh, and in this case, the more the monitoring basically will be done in the cloud or some 
uh, central service. I mean, the, the server will be it will still be there, but uh, more uh, overlooking monitoring fashion. For this, we need uh, three new objects. So we propose three new objects for Lago and Twin, which are kind of mirrors of what already exists for servers. Uh, with some minor uh, features to actually make it secure and follow the existing uh, specifications. Uh, we would have a client object which has all the information about the, um, the client. So how to reach it was the URI, an identifier. Uh, there will be also a client security object living in the in the nodes, which holds all the credentials needed. In the case of TTLS, it would be preferred keys. Or 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 public keys, or for instance, they also would have a security context, and then we also have the equivalent of the access control uh, for other clients. So basically, it tells one uh, low end to end client which things another client can do on its resources. And finally, uh, we also need to extend the interfaces. So we basically have two interfaces: the bootstrapping and the create and then the management. So the create. Uh, read, execute, and those, and we need to extend them so we can allow clients to use the management interface. And we also propose another interface for servers to provide uh, credentials to other clients. This is how uh, we propose that clients would gain access to other servers. It is, uh, let's say, inspired in the way that uh, ASOL tries to work uh, using code. We are just trying to have a similar uh, flow by using Lago and 2 uh, semantics and objects. So initially we have two clients and imagine that we have one client that wants to operate on a resource on client two and there's a Lago and 2 server that is shared between them. It's not necessary, servers will be different. Um, but in this case, the light bulb, for instance, the low end to client one tries to access a resource low end to client two and um, needs to learn which server holds the credentials for that. So it starts with an unauthorized, for instance, observe operation in the resource that is of interest and can get some server hints. That basically means uh, the low end to client two says you're not authorized, but you can go to this server to look for the credentials for this interaction. This is completely optional because this could be also deployed or uh, yeah, known out of, out of bed. Uh, but once that the client knows which server to go and get the, the, the credentials from, uh, it would do the would request the resource on uh, access on the server. The server would uh, install or instantiate the objects on both clients. So basically uh, distribute credentials and access rights on both clients. And after that, in case we are using, for instance, uh, this we would have a handshake here, and we can establish our authorized communication using the credentials that were uh, deployed by the server on demand. This, of course, can be skipped if this is not at deployment time, uh, and then the clients could still establish the same communication without having to request the, the authorization. But we believe that this gives much more flexibility to the deployment because uh, we don't have to really hard code uh, the servers and uh, which clients are going to be used uh, beforehand. We can, can just do this uh, on the slide. So, uh, I will go to some experimental evaluation of this. We tested this on the IoT lab, uh, which probably machine machine is in the tutorial. Um, the experimental setup looks like this. We have two level and two clients and some multi-hop topology that changes uh, depending on the experiment. Uh, then there is a gateway and uh, there is a low end to end server that is running our application. And what we want to test is of course, uh, both server-centric and uh, client-to-client -client communication and compare them on different setup. Um, the application of the low end to end server is uh, done using uh, Lation. It was modified to uh, accept this uh, request, this authorization request interface. And on the client side, we use uh, Riot uh, with the Wakama package to uh, implement the client side. Like I said, we use IoT Lab, and in the IoT Lab, we use the IoT Lab M3 node. 
which you might be familiar with, the Vortex M3, and all the communication is done over 15.4 radius. We can start by looking at the firmware size. We have ROM here on the left and RAM usage on the right on the on the right. Uh, this is without considering the basic right stuff. It's just looking at the that went into M part. And uh, we have here colors for the different kind of parts uh, of the of the stack. This is the baseline, so the minimum that you would use for just a normal that went to M application. Uh, here you can have the, the main parts, the, the core. And then there is some parts like utilities for parsing and uh, other stuff. But when we add the client to client communication, so without the authorization part, just the client to client uh, interface, uh, we add just a bit more of, of ROM and slightly more ROM. Uh, and then we add the full stack of the full functionality. So client to client, but plus authorization, there is no extra RAM uh, required. It's just some. Uh, extra code handling for looking for the resources, going back to the server and fetching the, the, the credentials. So it only requires an additional 3% of ROM, at least in the platform that I mentioned, and some 5% uh, of ROM, uh, ROM and ROM. So it's really not so much of an overhead for the features that it brings. Uh, and it follows, of course, the normal requirements of the, of the specification. Now we did some tests uh, on arrival time of a notification. So this is basically like the scenario that I was showing before. There is some event and one and one node needs to notify the other. In the server-centric version, the notification has to go uh, from the, the client to the server and the other one goes just directly to the other client locally. Um, here we have the server-centric version with only uh, one hope locally. So next to the gateway. This is usually the delay that we got in that connection. Uh, but when we look at the increase in the number of hops in the communication, we can see that it, uh, it, it increases with, of course, the number of hops between the client and the gateway. And when we try the client to client version, it's much faster, which is uh, expected, of course. And here we can see the uh, detail and Oscar was slightly faster, uh, probably also because of the packet sizes that we that we were sending uh, in Oscar that were smaller. I mean, it wasn't the case for uh, DNS. So the notification arrival time in that case would reduce like some 90%, mostly because the packet doesn't really have to go back to the internet uh, to reach the application. It can just go directly to a local client. That's what we were looking for. We uh, will not go into the graph for this, but we uh, tested different uh, multi hop topologies. Here are the diagrams, basically, of what we have. But uh, in all of them, they show the same result that was uh, reproducible under uh, different non topologies. Uh, usually, the kind of client perform much, much better than the open back to the server in the cloud. And uh, another example is the authorization request and the first uh, operation. We look at the first operation because this is also affected by. Uh, DTLS handling in case we're using that for the um, for the communication. Uh, what we see here, this stepwise uh, kind of curve, is because we have coverage transmissions. Uh, in this case, we are doing an, uh, the full length of what I showed. We do an authorization request on the server. The server installs all the objects that are needed, and the client requests uh, the resource on the other client. So all this is the, the time of this diagram. And we can see that uh, usually we get the, the ECS credential distribution is a bit faster than the OSCO credential distribution because in OSCO we have to um, create a new object. So an extra object uh, because of the way that the one to defines OSCO uh, security. When we do the first uh, client client operation, so the first observe, for instance, uh, of course, the time is much faster, but we observe that the DCLS version, of course, suffers of the extra uh, time because of the handshake. In the case of uh, OSCORE, the whole uh, security context is sent in that object, so there is not uh, no, no handshake in, it. That's in that point. There's no uh, head code for going on. 
So it is a uh, slow ATL SP to the handshake. And um, uh, last one, looking at the packet arrival and the good food that we get, uh, we compare the client line using all store and DCLS versus having a uh, server centric. So in this case, we're sending uh, notifications at different intervals between the clients. In this case, it's client to client. So it's, as we approach uh, shorter times, there starts to be some uh, drop of packets, but uh, usually it gets uh, hundred percent of delivery rate, but when we observe the same thing with the server centric, we observe that uh, it doesn't really work for really fast uh, notifications. So in this case, what we have, for instance, a really time sensitive uh, application, it would be a problem. And uh, the good put is eight times higher in this case. So in both client to client, uh, both versions covers the server centric. Okay. And then just finally uh, looking uh, at uh, really forced measurements of energy consumption, we see that as expected, they increase. This is the overall consumption of all nodes uh, when looking at different hubs. And it doesn't change uh, in the sense what we have. One hub doesn't change. It's like the same example of having a server centric with one hub. Um, but in many cases, it will increase. Uh, the energy having to have multiple hubs go to the gateway compared to maybe having the, the node that we want to talk to closer in the topology. That, of course, depends on the use case. But we can conclude that there is not much of a big overhead with uh, our solution compared to having a server centric one. So, just to summarize this, um, we came up with a uh, third party of the education. Uh, authorization mechanism for Lago and end clients. Uh, we propose new interfaces, both for interacting between clients, as well as for requesting uh, credentials and security objects from the clients through the servers. Uh, we perform the performance analysis, and we open source the implementation of both in uh, Wagama and Anlesha. Um, so that actually is uh, available if you want to test it. And uh, like I said, the client-to-client the, the -client solution reduces the, the, the times by 90%, and the good put is eight times higher. And the footprint is really not much of an overhead uh, for the features that come from the extensions. Uh, as future work, we would like to analyze uh, how to integrate directly the ASO uh, framework for Lambda to end because the flow is super similar to what we propose here. Um, we try to keep it closer to low end to in the sense that we still use objects, uh, but would be potentially good if that node already has built-in ASO implementation and we, that could be reused for the low end to end uh, application. And finally, uh, it would be nice to see if group also can be uh, integrated with uh, this low end to end because if we take advantage of having observations, um, notifications that can be sent to the group of score, uh, then one can just uh, use client to client on level end to end using all the goodies of level end to end, which are the semantics uh, and, the, and, the, and the security building uh, directly with the group of score, which would optimize much more the, the performance of uh, some deployments. Yeah, so uh, there you can find the, the code and measurements and all, uh, and also the paper that uh, analyzes all this in depth, including some uh, thread analysis. So, okay. yeah, thank you. That's it. Do we have any yeah. questions? That's it. Questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 You have to oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for the talk.